Hello guys, today we will downgrade this iPhone 5 from the latest version iOS 10.3.4 down to 8.4.1 so this can only be done by jailbreaking it so that is gonna be our first step so for that we will use a tool called 3U Tools and you'll have to install that in your computer I'm afraid it's only available for Windows so once you install it you're greeted with this uh, screen and now you will have to connect the device to your computer and you have to trust it so just click trust there and also by the way guys uh, you have to have iTunes installed so if you don't have iTunes installed the drivers will not be able to work or there will be no drivers for Windows and so that process won't work out so next that now that we're connected here we'll have to click OK and you'll see here is our iPhone all the information uh, and uh, here's the status jailbroken no so in order to change that we'll go to jailbreak flash and jailbreak up here and then go to the jailbreak section there and there they will say the following devices are supported all devices with iOS version 5 to 13.3 is a quite a big variety and yeah all you do now is you click run the jailbreak now that's not all I'm afraid because right now all it does is it will only copy the jailbreak program the tool which will jailbreak the phone to the phone and so we'll have to do some additional steps to get the jailbreak going so we'll have to wait until it completes the spar and if it doesn't do that for whatever reason you just try it again it's uh, sometimes doing that I don't know why it just happens so yep um, we'll just be patient and wait until this passes through Jailbreak install, please continue processing on your device. So we'll do that right now. Let's unplug that. We don't need that anymore. So that's all the stuff we need to do in the PC basically. So when you go here, you'll have the Helix Jailbreak on uh, your second page probably. And when you try to launch it, it's saying that's an untrusted developer. So what you'll have to do is go into settings and all the way back here, if it doesn't go there automatically, to general and the device management and here you see this scary weird looking email address so you click on this and you trust it of course obviously because otherwise we can't get the jailbreak going and also that's something I figured out myself don't forget to be on Wi-Fi because it can't verified otherwise you have to be in Wi-Fi well it's logical but you sometimes forget that so just to mention that so now that this is trusted we can open up this Helix app and as you can see right now it's saying jailbreak iOS 10 jailbreak and the developer so we click jailbreak it's running the exploit and doing all the great jailbreaking stuff so this process, until it's jailbroken, basically appears, appeals to all the iOS 10 devices. Doesn't matter if it's 64 bit or like just 32 bit. But um, from what we're doing uh, afterwards, I think that only works on 32 bit devices. So that's why I titled the video iPhone 5 because I'm not sure. Uh, it does work also on iPod Touch 5G. I can say that for certain, but other devices. I'm just not not sure but it most definitely works on this one so as you can see it's respringing and we should have a sweet city icon on the desktop or well desktop jail springboard there we go so right now it should be jailbroken so we'll click here yeah and here is Cydia so this was a pretty darn simple process wasn't it so 
So now that was only the jailbreaking process. So if you only came here for jailbreaking the device, that's how you do it. But you want to downgrade. So in order to do that, we'll have to go into the Cydia. And I recommend that you update it the first time you launch it. It's gonna come up with those error messages. Don't don't worry about them too much. Uh, just go back to Cydia and do the complete updating. You update it just that you have all the files, all the archives downloaded so that it finds the, the app we'll need because we'll need to install an application in order to edit a configuration file. And now we'll look for an application called Filesa. That's our file manager that we will use. You can use other ones as well, but I only know how to do it in Filesa, so that's the one I recommend. Just Filesa file manager. And that is the one we need. So it's free. Just install it. Right, now that it is installed, you'll find it on the springboard just like any other app. You'll see here Filesa. We'll go into Filesa and we'll go way back to the root of the device. So just tap back a couple of times until you're at the root directory. And so what we'll have to do is we'll have to go to system, library, core services. There. And we'll, we'll find a um, file called system version.plist or plist. So that is this one. We'll click on that one. So now we're at this in this file, so we'll extend the contents here. And here comes the important stuff. So now what we will do is we will trick the device into thinking that it's running iOS 6. And therefore, when we go into the updater, it will uh, update or well in this case downgrade to 8.4.1 because iOS 6 can only update to 8 and you can go from there but we don't want to do that we want to downgrade so we'll have to trick it in order to do that we'll edit here the product version and enter instead of 1034 6.1.3 so then we'll go back and also and as also important the product build version. So we'll uh, change the value of this from that build number from the iOS 10 to the 6.1.3 build number, which is for this phone 10B329. And if you're on an iPod Touch, I know that you have to. Um, write 6.0 instead of 613 uh, it won't work otherwise and of course the corresponding build number you'll find that build number in the uh, in the website ipsw.me you look for the uh, correct firmware for your device and you'll see the build number right next to it so I'll just double check that I did mess it up it's 10b329 yes that's correct so now we'll do is We'll save it, and now done. So before we can actually update to iOS 8, we'll have to give it a reboot. So we'll shut it down and start it back up. And there it will come up with a weird loading bar, which I don't know what it does exactly, but it will eventually go through. You'll just have to wait and let it load. So we'll turn it back on if it wants to. Yes, there it goes. We'll soon see the loading bar, which will come up shortly. There it is. So that will have to process, but it shouldn't uh, throw any errors. It should just go through, boot right back into iOS 10 from where we will continue then. So there it is, booted right up again. So, until it finished loading, it's got quite a lot of files on it. Just don't know what it did there. Glitched out a bit. Uh, so we'll go into settings and check the version number. And as you can see right now, it's saying it's on 6.1.3, which is obviously wrong. 
but that's what we want to see and also here the build number so what we'll do now is we'll go to software update and let it search for an update and guess what it comes up with 8.4.1 which is the one we want to downgrade to so believe it or not all you do now is you hit install download and install you accept it and it will actually downgrade from 10 to 8 without SHSH blobs, without doing hacking, without it being temporary or uh, it just needs a uh, like a tethered boot or something. No, it will just completely um, downgrade the phone to 841 without any problem. So it's gonna download now and uh, that's gonna take a little while. I'll also hook it up to a charger because I know this battery in that particular phone is uh, not the greatest anymore and it can suddenly drop to, I don't know, 30 percent. I don't want that to happen of course during the install because that would be bad. So we'll keep that plugged in until it, yeah, finishes the install. Now we'll wait until it will continue the installation. It will say preparing and some other shenanigans. You've all seen it before. It's basically like updating. It's just now that it's really downgrading. So yeah, we'll wait these five minutes and then it should start the install. So it is actually now already checking the update and yeah, it should just have shut down and begin the installation of 8.4.1. So there it goes. You can see the display is on and here is our loading bar. So now we, all we have to do is wait until it installs it. So it completed its first round of installing. So that was the first progress bar. Now it comes to the second. I can feel it's pretty hot so it's doing stuff. So we'll wait until the second one is also gone. It has finished. So we can open this up. And as you can see it says update completed which is ridiculous because it's actually a downgrade. So we'll click continue. Uh, see, uh, just log into my Wi-Fi quick. And yeah, it always comes up with the same message, but here we go. So now we can go into settings and info and it really downgraded to iOS 8.4.1. That's it. There you have it. And the coolest thing is you didn't even lose any data. Now, yes, uh, the data is still here. That's great, but I highly recommend you back it up before because if something goes wrong with either the jailbreaking process or the downgrading process your data is lost. But yes, this will leave your data intact and revert it to 8.4.1. A neat little trick. So yeah, there you go. Downgrade it to 8.4.1. The phone should be feeling much faster, more reactive, more responsive than the iOS 10. And yeah, so I don't know how long that will continue to work because it really only depends on how long Apple uh, will keep this 8.4 update on their servers. But right now, um, January 2021, it still works. And so I suppose it's probably going to work, continue to, continuing to work in the future for some time too. So I hope you found this interesting. Tell me if you have any problems, I'll try to help. But it's a pretty straightforward process. And again, the same works for iPod Touch 5th Gen. And yeah, tell me you guys, it, does it also work if you know that uh, on an iPad? If uh, you have a 32-bit iPad, maybe that works too. I could imagine. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching and uh, see you later.